Hello and welcome to this episode of Game of Leadership, the podcast for curious leaders. I'm Paula Eddie Wilcox and today I'm going solo. This is the episode where we bring together the last nine episodes and all of the things that our fantastic three guests have shared with us. Wisdom, curiosity, purpose, leadership, all sorts of things and you get to decide what's resonated with you most as I share some of the things that have resonated most for me. So I'm really looking forward to sharing this with you and I'll see you on the other side. Delighted to welcome you all back to another episode of Game of Leadership, the podcast for curious leaders. My goodness me, the last 10 weeks have gone in an absolute flash. I can't believe I'm here recording the 10th episode again um, called What Resonates With You Um, so quickly. Unbelievable. Um, I'm just, as I sit here, admiring the light behind me. What a beautiful morning. It's actually super, super early here in the UK as I record this. And um, yeah, just have a look out the window and it, it is a stunner. You can see all the the sunlight kind of reflecting in behind me. Um, Beautiful, beautiful. So I hope wherever you are in the world, it's a beautiful day. So what's happened in the last 10 weeks? My goodness me, so much. And I have had the most amazing, rich, fun-filled tips and tricks packed. Oh, I'm struggling to think of the right words. Um, Expertise packed is a good one. Conversations with my past three guests who have been Jimmy Burrows, Lee Howes and Sarah Lefevre, who um, you just would have listened to if you're up to date with the podcast last week. Wow, what a lot of information and exciting themes we've covered. And as always, today is all about me reflecting on some of the parts of those conversations that really, really have stuck with me over the last um, nine weeks with the guests. So... If we go right back to nine episodes ago, uh, or 10 as it is, um, to to Jimmy and some of the stuff that we chatted about. Now, Jimmy, Jimmy's experienced burnout himself. So he was sharing a lot of the things that he ha- he now has the privilege of helping guide others, um, especially in corporates with uh, very senior teams to look out for the signs and support one another in ensuring they just don't give burnout a chance of getting hold. And um, this came up a little bit with Lee, Lee Howes as well. And um, it's just so interesting that um, we are so much more savvy about the signs of what burnout can mean for each of us and um, being able to catch things earlier with the help and guidance of fantastic coaches, um, mentors can pick up these things in us too um, and really developing leaders to be able to take that coaching and mentoring approach with their team to be able to pick up some of these things as well because it isn't always the external consultant that's coming in and um, looking at these things. So, you know, we talked a lot about the softer skills. And, you know, I think I've probably said this before. We're often measured on the, the capabilities we can put on our CV and bring to the table um, at, a, at an interview, you know, you've got to be able to give examples of how you demonstrated this particular capability or, or this one over here. And um, you don't often get a feel 
for the softer side of the candidate, the people skills, the things that are going to take that leader to the next level. Um, and we talked a lot about those and how much they're valued in the workplace. And it really, it really inspires me that there are lots of organisations that are beginning to understand how important that is. But it also saddens me that there are many organisations that still don't realise the value that they hold in their hands in the wonderful employees that they have and how much value that softer side, that looking after your people, ensuring they're okay, ensuring they're engaged, ensuring they're looked after is still further down the priority list. Now, don't get me wrong, there are some awesome companies that do this superbly already. But um, yeah, it, it was a really interesting conversation. And, um, you know, just, just thinking back to the, the burnout piece, just looking at yourself, looking at your team and looking for those early signs where people are struggling. And you will note that you can see if somebody's struggling, if, they're, if they were always really great, let's say, at delivering to deadlines, but all of a sudden they're making excuses and they're late and things are slipping. That's got to be an early sign that something's amiss, shall we say. And that deserves a conversation to check in. Are you OK? What's going on? What can we help with? What needs to change? And approaching that with careful consideration, because they may not be ready to talk about it and they may not choose you to talk about it with. So being able to signpost them to people that can help and support. I think most organisations I'm coming across now have some sort of well-being support for their for their organisation or employees. Um, so being able to signpost them to the right place for support as well is going to be key. Then, of course, we got into my favourite bit, which is always around the games. And, um, you know, it's interesting. This word playful has really come up a lot in the last nine episodes, especially when I just in a little bit have a little review of, of my discussions with Sarah Lefebvre. Um, so exciting and inspiring in terms of that game playfulness in the workspace. So the other things that came up were, you know, around leadership. How are we looking at ourselves? What could we be doing more of to support ourselves and others? What could we stop doing? What could we start doing? And, um, you know, as I'm talking about this, it's making me think about um, the 360 review. Now, in the right place, used for the right reasons, that can be a really great tool. And I had that discussion with somebody the, the other day in one of the teams that I work with. Um, they were moving roles and wanted to know how, they, the, how they'd done in that particular role now that that was coming to a close, that close of that chapter, getting some really helpful, what did I do well? What do I need to improve? What could I do differently? Feedback. It's going to be gold dust to them as they move into that new role. So that's something that we've arranged for them to, to carry out. We also talked about... Um, you know, going back to the theme of, of burnout, that overwhelm and how trying to do all the things all of the time are often what causes us to tip over the edge because it's just that one extra thing 
the straw that broke the camel's back, as it were. And, um, you know, my my sort of theme that I share always in my coaching was that that one around ridiculously small steps, so ridiculously small, you can't help but uh, achieve them. Because, you know, what we're asking you to do is celebrate the wins along the way, no matter how tiny, you know, if um, getting up and get to work was a huge achievement for you, celebrate it. Because um, I know I've certainly been, been in a job where I was very close to not being able to get out of bed in the morning. And that was a different story. And I'm sure I've I've potentially shared it here, but it was about an individual that was making my life a misery. Um, so, you know, one huge factor, because I had to deal with that person all day, every day in my job, that made me lose confidence, feel that I couldn't do the job that I knew I was excellent at, and it starts to chip away. You start to question every decision you make, start to question every piece of work that you deliver, and um, you end up in this, this downward spiral, and it really is a terrible, terrible place to be. Thankfully, I had some good people around me, uh, fairly decent, not brilliant, fairly decent head on my shoulders at the time and um, was able to change my circumstances. Had I stayed in that role, I think um, we wouldn't be having this conversation today. So it's interesting, isn't it, how these things can affect your life. And one thing that was really interesting to me was, you know, just thinking about that that moment in my life where I, in a sense, had to protect myself and find a way to move away from what was bringing me down, in that case, a person, you know, what body armour do you wear on a daily basis to help, to help you cope with leading yourself and leading others each day? Just think about that for a moment. That's quite quite the metaphor, isn't it, um, for protecting oneself. Um, and Jimmy talked about that body armour in a really lovely way that, that's there to support you and putting those coping mechanisms in place to help you deal with what's in front of you and move forwards and get back that spark, get back that drive in a healthy way that doesn't drive you into the ground. Um, you know, and a, okay, mine was a person that that caused me to, to almost self-destruct. And I know that's quite the strong, strong um, expression, but that's how it felt at the time. Whereas for a lot of people, it's lots of little things that then suddenly become overwhelming and then, you know, push us towards that, that, unhealthy habits, those um, unhealthy behaviours, staying late at work, then coming home, working till midnight or whatever. You know, um, I've probably said this a lot as well. When the BlackBerry came out, first of all, we were all delighted that we could look at our emails, um, you know, outside of work. If we'd forgotten to do something, it was a blessing. But I've always said it was a blessing and a curse being contactable 24-7 is actually not helpful for our mental health. And a lot of people find themselves suffering from, from that very thing. So I'm no burnout expert, but um, I have helped and supported many clients that are on that road to, um, to self-destruction and being able to help them see that for themselves and bring themselves out of it gives them back that control. And it's not that I'm sitting here and saying that all my clients, all myself are control freaks. That's not it at all. But often 
we feel so overwhelmed because we feel out of control of the things in our lives and they're being done to us. We're not controlling how we interact and how much we take on. So really interesting conversations there. Oh, so much more we could talk about. But uh, thinking about discussions then with Lee, Lee Howes, as we um, chatted, um, really like-minded, really aligned in, in the work we do and the kinds of support and um, values that we hold um, shared together. And that, that idea of soft skills again came up, um, particularly around communication. Oh, I was having a conversation again with the team I work with the other day um, about communication and how um, we were talking about this particular situation that absolutely sucked. I'm not going to lie. Um, the way this particular piece of information had been communicated was just dreadful. And I, I just I just sort of had a moment where, where I was like, what were they thinking? How can they not have somebody that's looking at comms and looking at the key messages and really thinking about how the message is going to land and holding the communication before or rather until they've got all the moving parts rather than sending the communication and then realizing they haven't got all the moving parts and then having to send a follow up. Oh, I was so, so frustrated um, and I'm I'm giggling about it now. But honestly, it's just ridiculous. Communication is so, so important. And as you can probably gather, I'm pretty passionate about it. Um, I've been the communications lead in um, quite a few jobs over the years um, to support the team support messaging, ensuring that we're all working towards the same goals, we're all receiving the same information in the same way. Um, and of course, pitching the comms at the level for the audience that you're, um, you know, messaging to. And I see this done so badly, so badly in so many scenarios, um, especially recently. Um, just because it's reactive and they're not thinking and not planning ahead. So it's just it's just interesting to me how, you know, I'm older and wiser <laughs> and picking up on this stuff is just second nature. So, yes, that came into to our discussions a lot. But also that beautiful word. Again, it's part of the podcast title, curiosity. Here we are again. You know, this is the podcast for curious leaders, of course. And um, Lee and I have that shared love of getting curious around things. Um, you know, why did that happen? I'll say it again, the five whys getting to the root cause or the, the toddler that's going through the why phase. Yeah, why, mummy? Why, mummy? Why, daddy? Why is this happening, daddy? You know, so it just makes me laugh. Um, because getting curious can really, really help in most situations. Um, you know, occasionally you'll you'll know the be careful what you wish for, you know, as in if you're you're asking lots of questions and then something comes out of it that you you weren't expecting, um, you know, and and you didn't want to end up with a particular job, for example, that you were asking and getting interested about. Um, but uh, in the main, getting curious is really, really helpful in the leadership space. It allows that open and honest dialogue to happen and uh, for people to get to know each other, get to know each other in the way that we work, what makes us tick, um, and being able to tap into that really lovely, um, well, that really lovely, what am I trying to say? The stuff that goes on beneath that we don't always get to because we're so focused on what's right in front of our eyes. We're not looking any deeper. And getting curious allows you to get beneath the surface 
and really un- uncover what's really going on. And um, of course, taking that kind of coaching approach in the way that you're asking questions, um, you know, even just a, a tell me more sometimes is all that's needed. Because if somebody realizes that you're interested in what they're doing and what they're sharing, of course, they're going to tell you more and help you understand better and really welcome that dialogue. Now, I can hear you groaning and saying, oh, but there's no time for that. I just need the facts and then I need to go away and get on with it. There is, of course, a place for that. Absolutely. But you'll find that getting curious helps that richness of conversation, that richness of outcomes, developments and results within your teams as you move forwards. Honestly, it can make all the difference. And I'm sure you all know this, but hearing somebody share that with you is just a lovely reminder of the things that sometimes we can take for granted and forget to keep doing in our day to day. So I think this is all really, really helpful. And then that that sort of game piece, you know, there's so much in there that, um, you know, Lee talked about in terms of seeing games in in our day to day leadership around us, you know, thinking about that game of knowing self and how we bring that into our leadership um, and finding common ground with others um, and how we're spending the majority of our time. You know, it really is interesting where that playful part of leadership pops up in almost everything we do. Which brings me really to um, to Sarah, Sarah Lefevre. What a fascinating conversation and what a fascinating lady. My goodness me. Um, I was introduced to Sarah through um, a mutual friend. Um, and I'm so glad that we met. So glad we had the conversations we did because um, I really got to see game of leadership through a very, very different lens. And if you haven't um, listened to episodes 67, 68 and 69, please do go have a listen um, because it's fascinating stuff. I learned so much from Sarah in those conversations because, yes, I've played um, sort of games, team builds, icebreakers with my team but I, I'm not sure I'd looked at it in quite the same way as Sarah describes it. In other words, that development, the playfulness becomes part of the DNA is the way that I would describe it. Um, so I hope Sarah's smiling as she's uh, listening to this because we used the example of somebody using a game to soften the pill of something like compliance training, for example. Well, actually, allowing the playfulness to be part of the DNA of whatever it is that you're wanting to do in terms of training or development has a very, very different outcome and um, experience, actually, for those that are taking part and Sarah described that that want to make a real difference in the work that she does and I think what resonated between the two of us most were the training programs that we've either been part of or had to deliver in the past before we got older and wiser of course um, where everybody's fired up in the moment you know there's nothing wrong with the session there's there's engagement everybody's enjoying it um and they're saying yeah we're getting loads out of it and i've got this list of things i'm going to take away and i'm 100 percent committed to doing those and then they go back into the business and 
the day job and life and everything gets in the way because it hasn't been what I would term as sticky learning. And the way that Sarah described the use of play, playfulness, games in its open sense to design development for leadership teams that really is about the learning sticking. It really is about them getting stuck in knee deep, neck deep in this stuff and really getting underneath the surface so that in two weeks, three months, six months, and 12 months, and two years, they still remember and are still using the input for them, outputs of that training, learning, and playful game learning sessions. So I think there is an awful lot in there to to think about in terms of how you're developing yourself or your leadership team. And um, that beautiful, simple question of what if, what if anything was possible? And I said this um, in the show notes, what if anything is possible? Just think about that for a moment. You know, take away all of the restrictions that we put in place. Some are are what I would call real. You know, they exist. Some we, as humans, put in mental barriers to things. Try to just sit quietly for a moment. Think about something that you really want to achieve and try and remove some of those barriers. How amazing would that be? Could you achieve what it is that you've been wanting to achieve for a while? I'm willing to bet that you absolutely could, whether that's for yourself, your team, the organisation. Yeah, the power of the mind is incredible. And it is just thinking about that creativity you know, releasing that creativity, allowing people to have fun with it, bring that energy and that energy they'll remember and it will carry them through long past the end of any development sessions that you have. And I think, you know, in some of the work I do, we talk a lot about return on investment. You know, people don't want to um, try something because they're not sure if that will benefit the organisation or not. Perhaps the risk is too much. Well, I'm always of the the sort of approach that you've got to try something before you know that. And... Uh, If you try it once and it's terrible and it doesn't give you the results, that's okay. You tried it. Let's try something else. And it's part of that growth mindset that we've often talked about, trying things, learning from them, trying again. And, um, you know, when you first try to do a session that is has that playful element in its DNA, If you've never done that before in your organisation, be aware that it may not land well the first time, may not land well the second time, but by the third time, you'll already have the evidence that the first two are starting to gain results and traction. And then, you know, over time, opinions may well start to change. So... Think about that. Think of what's possible. Think about how you can get creative and what that might do to help your organisation to flourish. A lovely word that Sarah used, flourishing.
we also talked a lot about neurodiversity and um you know sarah shared her own journey with adhd and um i know that i have neurodiversity in my own family um and i'm sure many of you listening here have have that in your families with people you work with you know what it's absolutely fascinating and for me i'm only just touching the surface with all this stuff but i'm so keen to learn more and there is so much more out there than what people over the past have classed as normal you know let's embrace the differences let's embrace the differences that people bring because of the amazing ways their brain works that's different to mine, that's different to yours. Imagine what's possible if we embrace all of that and bring all of that fantastic um, or those fantastic abilities, that fantastic thinking together for the better of our team. On that note, I'm going to leave that thought to percolate in your incredible brains um, overnight as you've listened to this today. See what pops up in your mind about uh, all the things that I've talked about today, you know, whether it's about embracing difference, whether it's about getting creative and curious, whether it's about suddenly realising after listening to this, oh my goodness, I noticed in um, my colleague now that I'm reflecting on this, that there's something going on. I need to check in on them because of burnout, potentially. That doesn't mean you're going in gung-ho. It's just approaching these things gently because you've noticed something. Why did you notice it? Reflection's really important, folks. It gives us time to take in what we've thought about or seen or done and then kind of unpick in our minds what happened, why did it happen, why did I react in that way to something somebody said, or why do I think I've seen that thing in that person, that colleague at work, what's making me feel like that, before you react. It's wonderful because it means you're you're going in to, to a situation informed rather than reacting to something that's just happened in front of you. So take that time to reflect. We so rarely give ourselves time to think and reflect. It's worth building it into your diary. So yeah, homework for today. If you ever wanted any homework from one of my podcasts, go and pop some time in your diary that gives you protected time to reflect and think on all that you have on your plate, because let's face it, our plates are often overflowing, more full, we're spinning so many plates, whatever metaphor you want to to use for this stuff. Um, So whatever we can do to help ourselves is going to be um, of huge long-term value to us and our well-being. So that's it for today's episode. Episode 70, goodness me, again, What a nine weeks of of wonderful guests. Thank you to Jimmy, Lee and Sarah for being so amazing, giving your whole selves and um, sharing your wisdom and thoughts with with me and the listeners in you um, to learn and use in your leadership. So whatever you're up to over the next um, few weeks and months, enjoy, look after yourselves and um, hope to see you again on Game of Leadership, the podcast for curious leaders. Bye for now. Thank you for joining me for today's episode of Game of Leadership, the podcast for curious leaders. I'm Paula Eddie Wilcox and it's been my pleasure to share what's resonated most for me over the past nine episodes with our fantastic three guests. What now do you want to take away and help change or influence the way you lead moving forwards? There's been so much in there that I've shared today and so much that we could dig into deeper. So if you want to know more, 
please do reach out and get in touch. I'd love to have a chat. But for now, I look forward to speaking with you next week on Game of Leadership, the podcast for curious leaders. Take care.